Among the world's most modern motorsports facilities in the Midwest, Kansas Speedway opened for business in 2001. Some 15 miles west of Kansas City, under the ownership of International Speedway Corporation, this racetrack has been host to many memorable moments, but here tonight under the lights for race number two of the playoffs, it's the Overtake iRacing League live from Kansas Speedway. I'm your host, Bradley Cooper, alongside our co-commentator and producer of the season, Morgan Cook. And I tell you what, Morgan, under the lights here at Kansas, it doesn't get much better than this. This track, well, you've seen it here on V-Speed prior to this moment. It can be very racy and you can get down to the inside on the early run. A lot of multi-groove racing yet to be had as we go into the playoffs. Yeah, obviously uh, my my co-commentator here in the booth, Bradley Cooper, is a big fan of this place. He won here a few weeks ago in a different league at this Kansas Speedway. But uh, can you believe we're 14 races into this season, about to see playoff race two at Kansas tonight? Honestly, as far as the season goes, there have been toss-ups in every single series from the Xfinity, the Cup Series, and then here with Barrett Morton and what he put together in the regular season. But the 17-degree the banking in these turns right now, let's talk about the progressive banking here, Morgan, because you can run that outside line and wall ride late in the run, but when you, the green flag drops, you're going to see a lot of people dive to the inside and try to make those passes early. Yeah, there are three distinct lanes at this racetrack. The bottom, right around that white line. There's a middle groove with kind of a little bit more banking. And then, like Bradley said, right up against the outside wall has lots of grip, lots of banking, and you'll ride up there. You'll migrate towards the top. But when the tires are fresh, you'll be ripping the bottom. So setting up here, we're just getting ready to grid, but let's take you through the points because that's really what everyone cares about. Morgan, Barrett has put on a clinic here in the truck series. And even after all of the wins, that four win season in the regular in the regular season for points, he's only 10 points ahead of what I would venture to say is your personal favorite, Lucas Lyons. What do we expect here tonight? Well, Lucas has been on a bit of a hot streak as of late, and I would expect those two, including Christopher McCullough, to be up at the front of this race and, and extend their points lead. Um, these other 13 drivers are going to have to pick it up if they want a chance of stopping that trio up at the top. Well, I say your personal favorite. I'm a little biased as well. Lucas has just been hot as of late. But Christopher McCullough, 25 points out. Can't count him out of the game as well. Let's take you trackside now as we're hitting the grid. You're on V-Speed. Starting on the pole, though, it's Daniel Cunningham in the 08. I believe that is his first pole of the season, if I remember correctly. The 08 is going to start next to Brian Kaiser, or Kaiser, rather, in the 07. Tell you what, fast time for him as well. Probably the best start of the race that he's had this season. Christopher McCullough in the 04 is going to start in row number two, right next to James Kaufman. A lot of drivers that have struggled in qualifying all season long, starting up towards the front. Barrett Morton, that uh, most winner of this uh, of all three series, is going to start in fifth with Sean Kaser in the sixth position. Row number four belongs to Lucas Lyons, the guy that's just outside that points lead in seventh position. Bobby Hall Jr. is going to start in eighth, the guy that turned his season around. David Sheets and Kenneth McCullough Jr. are going to start in row number five. Starting in 11th, Zane Zady in that uh, familiar carpet painted machine. That's a great scheme out there in the 77. John Mollahan alongside him in 12th. 13th, Andy Kurtz in the five. Expect him up at the front tonight. Travis Bieber alongside him in 14th. 15th, Ron Morris Jr. in the 76. Wes Wiegan will start 16th. 17th, Jeremiah Hobbs in the 10. Peyton Hubbard in the familiar 51 will start in the 18th position. Rounding out your 10th row, Stephen Page and Dakota Shepard. Alex Healy. League Admin's going to start in 21st position with Daniel Worthington in 22nd. 
Tom Hall in the 93 is going to start 23rd with Dustin Reinstead in 24th. Chad Ross yet to hit the grid just yet. The 38 is going to start 25th. Kyle Mace, who started out this season really hot, kind of went lukewarm here as of late in the 55, is going to start 26th. And then Eric Parks and Michael Cole will round out this 28 truck field. So here tonight at Kansas, we'll put the race analysis up on your screen if we can. I don't know if we have that graphic available here on this scene, but here tonight, we're going to go for 90 laps, if I remember correctly. And stage break around lap 30. Morgan, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I believe you are correct on both those points, Bradley. So the stage break, going to reset this field. We put it under caution. Stage points have been oh so important. You look at what Morton did, but that has a lot to do with why Lucas Lyons is in the hunt here tonight. You, you take those bonus points, kind of like leading the most laps, getting a lap led. It adds so much to the T here with what you can what you can do in the season as the pace truck gets out of the way. Here we go with the 08 of Daniel Cunningham. He said, I'm putting ghost. I'm getting rid of the Oregon Ducks. Here we go live and racing for chase playoff race. Number two. Already coming around here, and I tell you what, the 08 lost two positions. Barrett Morton moved up quick. Down on the inside, he took three positions in half a lap. As soon as they came out of turn number two, the nine of Morton's ready to lead this race. Well, the, the nine going into last week had a massive points lead, bait, uh, bait, thanks to those three wins, four wins, whatever it is. Lucas Lyons closed that up to 10 points in one race by leading the most laps, winning the stage, winning the race. So, Bear Morton's going to do the same thing here tonight if he wants to get that points lead back to where it was. Speaking of Lucas Lyons, he's already moved up two positions. He's up to the fifth spot and into this top five down on the bottom of the racetrack. Peeking to the inside of the 0-7, Brian Kaiser, Kaiser has already lost a little bit of ground down two positions. This top five jumbling around. Zero four of Christopher McCullough going to come around to lead this time by in the zero three to 25. Kaufman's around. A lot of trucks wrecking on the front stretch. Yeah, ball of hands in it. John Andy Kurtz. Oh, man. 113's involved. Let's go back and have a look at this one. It really starts, I think, with the zero seven and the 25. Zero three, rather. I don't know if the zero three was loose. Maybe a blimp camera would show us a little bit better here. Ah, man, he, he snapped free. It looked like he just went up into the inside. Here we are down, the back, down stretch, the back stretch into three. Oh, three's run on the bottom inside that 24 machine. Yeah, it looks like the 24 just got oh. a little bit loose. Maybe tried to avoid the 25 and clip the 03, and all of a sudden there's a bunch of trucks involved in that one. And of course, back to the live shot here, and then you've got a few trucks coming down. Get some damage repaired. You've got David Sheets and John Mullahan, Andy Kurtz in there as well, Peyton Hubbard. Pretty much everyone outside the top 15 has come down pit road. Now the strategy. If you have a couple tire advantage here, Morgan, you stand to gain a lot because you can run the inside a little bit longer than those guys that are staying out right now. 
And as you're aware, Bradley, these trucks build tight at this racetrack. So you want to, you want new tires at all costs. It's really difficult to get it to free up, especially when you migrate to the top. It just builds tighter and tighter and tighter. It just keeps pushing the nose, turn the wheel more and more. So five lap pressure tires will do you a lot of good at a racetrack like this. Absolutely. It's so tough to pass here at Kansas and you get up on the outside wall. You're kind of riding around here like it's Darlington at times. Once guys get up to your back bumper, even if they're faster than you, it's so difficult to get a run to the inside and actually do anything with it. You kind of you kind of command the race. If you're the zero four of Christopher McCullough right now, you're in the catbird seat, as they call it. You're you're on point. You demand and command this race. I, I would have to say right now, get to the lead as fast as you can if you're Barrett Morton. Take this restart for everything it's worth. And not only that, but like I said earlier, based off of last week, the momentum of the championship is kind of shifting away from Barrett Morton. He had a great regular season. Obviously, the very beginning of the year, it was uh, Kyle Mason, 55. We had him pegged as the you know, easily going to go out and win the regular season. Then Barrett Morton happened and snap of the fingers. He's got yeah. four wins, right? And now we're getting to the point where it's slipping away from Barrett Morton, maybe more to Lucas Lyons hands. So let's see what happens here tonight. And uh, I, I bet this is going to be a pivotal race in this championship hunt. Well, and you put yourself up on that top, on that pedestal. Everybody else is wondering how they can win. They're putting themselves in a situation and they start to rehearse. And I mean, you go back to the drawing board every week. How can I win against this guy? So the little victories where, you know, Morton maybe has an off week. That's, you know, we're limited right now with how many races in, in the playoff time. But all it takes is one week for Morton right now. And somebody else is going to be right there to capitalize on it. You have to have a perfect race every race as soon as we reset those points. That's what champions are made of, right? Is, is always being there at the right time, doing the right things. And uh, this nine is peaking, but there are a couple others who, they're, uh, they're in that same conversation. It'll be a really interesting playoff to see what happens here, but rolling through turns two, we're about to go back racing. Lap number seven. The short little stint there, and Christopher McCullough takes over the lead during that green flag. Bear Morton's going to start on the outside. You have Daniel Cunningham, the pole sitter, who's fallen back two spots already. And then problems for guys that normally don't start inside the top five, the 25 of Kaufman, the 0-3 as well, and up, up there in the top five to start this race has fallen out of the top ten. Problems for a lot of these guys already, but let's set it back up. Kenneth McCullough Jr. back to 22nd. 07 of Brian Kaser is going to start on the outside here in row number two. Green flag back out. We're back underway here at Kansas for the second time today. Horton drops down already right in front of the 08. He's already setting up a pass. Can he dive to the bottom? Door gets closed by the 04 of Christopher or Christopher McCullough. And here comes the 08 on ahead of steam. And Lucas Lyons and fit. Ford's gonna try the top side here on McCullough. Gonna see if he can grow, grab that lead on the top side. First pass. Oh, he'll get it. On the outside we've seen here. He's Able gonna have the momentum front. come out of the four. He's going to be side by side going into turn one. That high line is really where you want to be. If you get to it too soon, though, Morgan, you saw this. Uh, it, I know I, I, my bias here with how I like this racetrack, but you know that you have to get to the outside. But if you do it too soon, you're going to put, put yourself in a situation where those tires, especially these guys that hit pit road, they'll have an opportunity. It's just whether they get there in time. But not only that, but going to the top so soon will change the balance of the truck and it'll make it swing tight. If you run the bottom enough, you can kind of work the right rear just based on running a, a seam. But when you're running the top, you're just going to build tight and tight and tight and you won't have nothing to do about it. Well, Barrett has the nose here as they go into turn three. And how about that? Lucas Lyons picks up another position. 
He's up to fourth spot now as they come out. Oh, the 04 really loose there off of four. He got some help. Slid up in front of Morton. Morton did not lift because he can't. He's got three trucks pushing him. And that 04 just about went around. Working a little bit higher line there for the 94 of Bobby Hall Jr. He had the momentum coming around the 48. Couldn't take it anywhere. Nine still trying to complete the pass on the 04 of Christopher McCullough. Battle for the lead still hot as they come out of turn four across the line. Oh, there it's goes Hall. Be Morton just by a hair, and there goes Hall in the 88 of Wigan. West Wigan, and that's another caution here on lap 11. Those are both playoff drivers as well. Red spoilers signify the top six team at West Wigan. Hard hit to the outside wall. Bobby Hall Jr. also involved with it. 94 probably has enough damage that he's going to be done for the day. There's a look at it right there, just across the nose of the 07. 88 got into his door. Just a case of not quite being clear. Back have a look at it. Off of four. Off of two, sorry. 94 trying to make a move on Lucas Lyons. Hits the apron a little bit. And that that kind of causes all this. He gets checked up. Brings the 07 into it and just a little net code there. Not enough room given. You could go either way, but around goes the 94, 88, and 07 into the outside wall. When I kind of see the 94 working his way up the racetrack there and that probably had something to do with touching the apron, I'd say. Yeah, he, he got out of shape, obviously, coming in the middle of three and four, and then it he never really got it settled down. That sets us up for caution number two and all these strategies and what these guys have to factor in for the fuel mileage. We keep resetting it. Limited tire sets here in the Overtake iRacing League Truck Series. It's It's been a toss-up all season long with limited tire sets all across all three series, but this truck series has the least amount of tires available compared to the other series, and that has a lot to do with the race distance because they run the shortest distance of all the other three series. What, what you have to take in now is you've got guys that have gotten to the lead this early, and Kansas is a completely different animal. Tires are so important because you can't pass. Yeah, you'll need to short pit, need to do something different than the drivers in front of you to have a chance at passing them. You can't run a different lane later in the run. The bottom won't be feasible. The middle won't be feasible. You have to run the top, much like Darlington, like you said earlier. So the only way to pass somebody is to do something different than them. If you can't do it on the racetrack, you got to do it at pit road. So setting up here on lap number 14, guys are coming down pit road. We had a few already hit there. Michael Cole, Sean Case are still trying to get some damage repaired. Daniel Worthington in as well. Bobby Hall, obviously, with that heavy damage. Wes Wiegand. A lot of trucks involved in that uh, first 10-lap stint. I mean, you got guys that are playoff or, well, chase contenders already early in this race and we're only two races into that so right now you're trying to mitigate that damage your truck is almost smoking and broken what do you, what do you do here morgan well this is the point when you just say i need to focus i need to mitigate the damage and just go out here and complete the laps if i'm not going to win the race which if my truck's broken and smoking like you said i'm not, probably not winning the race just need to go out here and do the best I can. People will drop out, probably. There will be incidents, probably. I need to not be part of them, and I need to go gain spots that way. Beat them through attrition. 07 truck with the EOL. He's going to stop there on the front stretch, let everyone buy. I like the synchronization that we have here. We're on the same cameras. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. So, 
We set up with Barrett Morton, Christopher McCullough, Daniel Cunningham, Lucas Lines, Zane Zadie. And I say that name as in I've butchered it a couple of times. But how about that? 77 up to the top five. He's up six positions. Pretty much everybody in the top 10 has gained spots with the exception of Lucas. Well, actually, Daniel Cunningham, he's, he's down two spots from the pole, but everybody else has gained a spot at least. And, and quite impressive, that uh, 55 up 17 spots, 18 spots, depending on how it looks from the start of this race. Pretty impressive. Pace truck gets out of the way. Barrett Morton on the inside of the 04 of Christopher McCullough, who led the vast majority of the beginning of this race. Lap 16, we're back underway. Barrett Morton, great launch in second gear. He's going to clear him by two car lengths into turn one. And that's what you need to do here. And now you're going to probably run the outside after this lap. Get this thing up to full song. 48 truck down on the bottom, keeping that 77. He's going to go to the inside of the 04 McCalla. Little wash up there by the 08 of Daniel Cunningham as they come out of four. Tight racing. Oh, they door banged. Oh, contact. Big time off of four. Thought they were going around. That's exactly what caused the last caution. But you got to race tight here at Kansas. Got to keep that guy pinched down or else he'll just drive right past you. And Christopher knows that, but here they come off a of turn two. The zero four has the momentum to get around up on that high line. I'm really surprised nobody's taken that complete outside as they come off a of turn four. Nine and Morton's gonna launch and keep that lead. How about this? Daniel Cunningham, winless this season could have fooled me he's uh he's racing like somebody who's done this before and can go out here and win this race and see if this 08 can go out there and do it yeah sitting fourth in points a big zero there on the truck standings and he's kind of like oh, oh the wreck in the nine morton's around that is not what we want to see. Zero four in it as well. Lucas Lyons also involved. Oh boy. Everything we just said about the points, forget it. It is all gone. What, uh, Travis Beaver involved as well. Innocent bystander got the right front ripped off. But if we, uh, I think if we ride on board with the 08 machine, let's see. Our leader right now, right on the nose of this machine. Let's see here. Be able to see the nine goes down to the bottom. And the 04 tries to follow him, and the 08 goes in the middle. And they just didn't quite all sync up where they were trying to go and all of a sudden there's a car wrecking off your nose and there goes the leaders. That's a case of everybody being on the same piece of real estate. Yeah, that's wrong place, wrong time for all three of those trucks, unfortunately, but it's, it just happens that way sometimes. And heavy damage here for Christopher McCalla, Barrett Morton, everybody coming down for pit road uh, that was involved in that this shakes everything up in the points morgan i i don't even know what to calculate here because based off of how morton hit the wall he's probably going to lose this points lead to somebody yeah this machine is not running right now probably because they're working on it but as you can see there is no front end to this truck there's a look at it from pit lane that's a modified if I've ever seen one. So three cautions, about seven laps apart here today in chase race number two. The lead changes have been limited, but 08 of Daniel Cunningham gets back to the point. Zane Zadie. He could have an opportunity here. He'll start on the outside. 
We haven't seen this 77 really lead any laps here. I'm still waiting to see what the 77 truck is capable of. This is a track where kind of, it's kind of like an asterisk with uh, one of those Darlington races or Dover races where you have guys that just are particularly good at a certain racetrack, and Kansas has become that. I've been really impressed with the 77 since he appeared a few weeks ago. A pretty solid rookie, always running up in the top 10, it seems like, and usually finding his way out of trouble. See if he can capitalize on this good fortune and get himself a podium, but also really pressed by Ron Morris Jr. in the 76. We've seen this truck sideways, in the fence, uh, a lot of races this year, whether they're his doing or not. He's been caught up in a lot of incidents, and he's sitting here in third position, and it's good to see Ron Morris Jr. having a good run here tonight. Well, we'll go back green on lap 24. You're watching the Overtake iRacing League Truck Series Chase Race number two here on V Speed. We're going to take a quick commercial break, get these guys racked back up, and see you in just a moment here on V Speed. Back after this. Big run out of four. He's going to be there. Tristan oh, Martin there. Cannot count out to 37. Oh! oh Cabot, where did he come from? Here, Here comes Zwack. A punt from the 33. Two it's a drag row. race. The Magic Man wins it Auto Club. Welcome back here live on V-Speed. Playoff race number two of the Overtake iRacing League Truck Series. About 23 laps into this event right here. Just had our third caution of the evening. Two lead changes. Zane Zadie looking to make it three lead changes and that 77 on the top side. Roll three. What do you got, Daniel four. Cunningham? You got Daniel Cunningham that started on the pole here, starting on the inside. I'm kind of surprised by that, Morgan. Yeah, maybe he, uh, he thinks he can get a really good hole shot and slide up in front of the 77. We'll find out here shortly. Well, he got it. That's a good shot right out of the gate, and he's going to drive his own line into turn one. Ron Morris Jr. on the inside for second place. 77, 76. A little bobble there by the 77 and the 10 of Jeremiah Hobbs up here into the top five. 11 positions, 12 positions gained as it goes all the way to the outside line. Ooh, the 77 chopped the nose of the 76 and it caused the 10 to shoot up the racetrack for fear of getting turned. That was, uh, that was a lot to unpack in one little moment. And how about this, Alex Healy offset three wide. The 55 of Kyle Mace, who was the season favorite to start this thing out, up to four. The high line starting to work its magic. Eric Parks, we don't talk about him very often. There he is running in sixth position, the playoff driver. This top five has changed hands so much in just a brief amount of time, 25 laps in. Just over a quarter of a way through this race. Everything behind fifth place seems to be up for grabs right now, Morgan. Yeah, and oh, that's a crossover. Top to bottom for Parks. Thought he was going to go. Oh, Morris didn't give him any space. Oh, Goodness. Boy. Little contact there with the 76 and the 73. They're going to make it through turns three and four. Offset three wide back deep in the field. 
You can see Peyton Hubbard back there. Dustin Reinsettle working his way through this field. Dustin Reinsettle's up 15. Eric Park's up 20. Big movers here in the top 10. Hubbard's up seven positions as well. That's what it looks like. Driving through traffic here at Kansas and hoping that one truck doesn't come across your nose. And Kyle Mace takes over the lead here as they come across for lap 27. Now 28. Was, I don't know. I don't know what the line is here because everybody seems to be running middle bottom. I think once we get into a long run, we'll see that top line become more important, but we just haven't got there yet. We've only run seven laps at a time, like you pointed out before, and have yet to run, you know, a, la a, a run longer than 10 laps. Another three wide situation into turn one. Parks sliding up the racetrack. He's washing up big time to the outside of the 77. Another little pinch there. And Parks in the middle. Ron Morris Jr. into three. He's really pinching the 73 of Parks down. Now he's going to slide back in behind. These guys making it through these corners right now. I don't know where it's going to happen, but it looks like it's going to happen here very soon. And there's oh, the there caution. There is a caution. Not sure where it was. Let's go back and have a look. I don't think it was the 25. It means 94. Oh, he was pitting. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't find it either. And oh, this might be the stage. How about break. stage break? Yep. Yeah. As soon, as soon as you said it, it was uh, absolutely what it was. We forget every week. Well, the, the yellows kind of throw us off our game here, and. So I believe that means stage win. Or Kyle Mace. That, that does. The 55 is going to get it. Which is great news for him. His playoff efforts. Hope those points on the screen. There they are. So you can see Kyle Mason 12 in points right now. He just added 10 to his total. That would effectively, if everything stays the same, move him up a good number of spots up to top 10 in points. Well, here we come down pit road now. Mace going to lead him in. Alex Healy capitalized as well on those stage points, getting second. We know it's not a triangle, but the 97 has been pretty strong here as well. Has a potential to take over this lead. Track of some triangle qualities. A little bit. Yeah, it does. It is a tri-oval. Mace down and away now. He's going to win this battle off of Pit Road. Healy just behind him. Doesn't look like anybody's going to challenge the 55. Zane Zadie, really close battle there for the fourth, fifth position. 56 of Stephen Page. Going to get into the top five. So stage number one has concluded. And we take iRacing League Truck Series coming back out for the second stage of the race. We'll have about a remaining 55 laps when we go back green. Another quick commercial break here. We'll be back here on V-Speed right after this.
And here comes Milo. Big run out of four. He's going to be there. Tristan Martin there. Cannot count out to 37. Oh! oh Cabot, where did he come from? Here, here comes Zwack. A punt from the 33. Two it's a drag a race. The Magic Man wins it Auto Club. Back again as we go one to green here. Overtake iRacing League playoff race number two at Kansas. Just finished stage one. Kyle Mace was your stage one winner. Alex Healy second, Cunningham third. Paige, Parks, Zadie, Morris, Ryan Settle, Sheets, and Hubbard are your top ten. Interestingly enough about this top ten, only one driver has failed to gain any positions. That would be the third place driver, Daniel Cunningham. Started on pole, falling back to third. Still a strong showing for that 08 machine. Everybody else has gained spots throughout this race. Look at Dustin Ryan settle back here in eighth. He's gained 16 positions. A lot of this top 10 has changed hands. 23 spots for Eric Parks, 25 for Kyle Mace. If you started in the back of this race right now, Kansas, I would have called you a liar if you said you passed most of this field in the first stage. And conversely, if you said you started in the top 10 and you're currently running in the 20s, I would have said, well, something must have happened. And uh, that's an understatement. A lot has happened here to begin this race. We've had four cautions, technically three, but Kyle Mace is gonna lead him into turn one. Stage number two underway. Nice little pinch there from the 97 of Healy, but it's not going to be quite enough early in this run. You can run the bottom. 08 is going to get a big run down the back stretch to the inside bottom of Mace. Change for the lead possible here into three. This 08 came to play. Won the pole. Hunting the lead right now, and he's going to get it with a little bit of help from his friend, Eric Parks. If they're not friends, they are now. He only leads that lap. He is clear if he wants to come up, but he's gonna drive it into turn one with that momentum on the bottom of the racetrack. Maybe a little slide up here on the back stretch. He will move in front of the 55 of Mace. 73 of Parks has lost ground to the 97 of Healy and another crossover here as they go into three. Another, another slide drive, another crossover almost. These guys are going for it. They know that the lead here is so important to Kansas. All that momentum down on the bottom just kind of baffles me here, Morgan, because I know how this B car handled. I can't believe how much speed they're carrying on the bottom of this racetrack. Zero eight of Cunningham. Thought he was clear for a second. Now Parks, uh, you know, he thought he had a friend tags the apron. Zero eight coming off a of turn four, probably gonna slide up in front of Mace. There's still three wide behind him. And Lucas Lyons back into the hunt after having a little problem there on that second caution. Andy Kurtz as well. Andy Kurtz made his way back to 12th position. That red machine run on the top side. Fast all season. Fast here tonight. And 73 of Eric Parks moves by Mace. Mace going to put a little block down into three. Try to carry that momentum into that apex. He's going to take up the lead as they come out of turn four. That's clear for the wood grain truck of Eric Parks. He's going to lead lap number 38. All over his rear bumper behind him. So four different leaders here in a short stint of time. Stage winner would be the 55. Zero 08, the pole sitter, has fallen back to third. 73, who hasn't led until just this moment, he's going to maintain it into turn three. Look at Lucas Lyons on the top side. He is about to go grab a top five position. A little bit of a block there from the 08. But the top side's coming into play here. 
And that makes more sense to me, Morgan, seeing that 48 truck up on the outside. If you want to gain anything, that's where I would be right now. He moves it up another lane. 08 of Cunningham actually moves it up to block on the exit of the corner. Now losing a little bit to Peyton Hubbard in the 51, falls back to seventh. Look at this, we have the 77 of Zane Zadie. He's starting to creep, he's back into this top 10 as they come off a of turn two. Heavy momentum here on the outside line. Ron Morris Jr. losing a spot to the one of David Sheets. Zadie clipped the apron a little bit right there in front of Ryan Stadentley. Ryan Stadentley is losing a little bit of positions. He gained a lot at the start of this race, but has fallen out of the top 10. And if you go back up front, they're two by two. And a little contact here with the 08. He slides up in front of Lucas Lyons. Peyton Hubbard got into him. Yeah, that 08 has kind of been in that in-between line for a lot of this run. Not quite the top, not quite the middle. It's just frustrating enough for that 48 right behind him. He just cannot get by. And almost some contact there for the lead as Eric Parks is going to come by just short of the lead as he crosses the line. 73 back to the point as they go into turn one. 55 of Mace pinched down here on the entrance of the corner, but down off the exit, looks like the 73 has matching speed. Almost a door bang there as they go down the back stretch. Beautiful shot there as they enter turn three. Now into turn four. The lead is still up for grabs. 73 of Parks is going to lead this time by. Ace wants it back. I think eventually this will settle down and we'll get some of that classic Kansas up against the wall racing, but it seems like it's going to take 15, 20 laps for these tires to get to a point where you can't just rip the bottom or drive wherever you want. Well, I think that outside is faster on the exit here. You can see Healy as he came off the back stretch. He had the run into the back of Parks, but couldn't go anywhere with it. And the 56 of Stephen Page, little door check there across the line. Man, Parks is just hanging it out there. He's going to get the run down the back stretch. Well, if you're not driving it, what are you doing here? That 73 is sure driving it. Be a victory here for the 73. And this is where a lot of these guys that were in the playoffs are thinking, okay, this is my racetrack. This is where I capitalize. Alex Healy looking for his second victory of the season. He is being patient, but he's about to go three wide into one. The Lions finally got to the outside of the third place truck. He's going to have a huge run down the back. Make it two for one here. It's, there is now a three-way battle for the lead. Now, if you're the 48 machine, where do you go? Because the 73 Parks is playing defense on the 55. Now you're in the picture. He's playing defense on you as they go into one. I go all the all way, the way to the outside. All the way to the wall and then and then cross him over on the exit right here. I'd be making a hard left in between that 55 and 73. Not quite enough room, but now it's a two truck race. There it is. Oh, blocked there from the 73 of Parks. He gets wiggled out of the way. I don't know if they're going to make it through the exit of four. Oh, there's three Lions wide again. Lions keeps him upside. This is close here into one. Three on the top, that two lead. on the bottom. That lead has changed hands three times in just about a quarter of a mile. Oh, look, lines on the wall. Well, he has the speed. He's just got to be patient with it. And Sheets He's going to be able to too. make the pass. Yes, he is. David Sheets, I'll say hello to P3. Well, you drove the bottom here. If you're Kyle Mace, you gotta you got to get to that outside at this point. Same thing for the 97 of Healy. The track has moved up. It's pretty obvious that these guys on the outside are carrying more speed. Park's going to move down and now allows Lucas Lines to the outside. I don't know if that was a good move or not coming out of four. 
73 is going to drive it in there really deep. He's going to watch the track a little bit and not quite clear the 48. If he cleared him, would have been a different story, but they're going to be side by side as we get down to turn one. They got lap traffic in front of them, too. That's a zero four of Christopher McCullough as they come off the corner. He's going to meet at probably the worst time imaginable. Oh, using him as a pick. Oh, that was a classic racing move. That's going to cost Lions at least a spot. I can't imagine he's too happy about that. Yeah, if you're the zero four right now off the pace, you have that damage. Going to fall back into the groove there and These guys so fast compared to that front end of damage and now Parks goes to the bottom racetrack trying to break that draft. I don't think that has been kind of a deciding factor for the run that comes off of turn two and turn four. I don't think dropping to the bottom of the backstretch is really going to change anything. No, I think all that tells you, all that tells your opponent is where you want to be entering the corner. And at that, it compromises your entry ever so slightly makes you burn up the right front a little bit more. So it, I would rather stay up against the wall and just have a little bit of deception in your pocket so that you have something to show them when you get down to the corner. This truck very momentum based, but washing up the racetrack here for the 73. Oh, Lucas got, Lines actually gets a little tight. He got very tight, big lift out of that truck and he lost about three tenths in one corner. Now Parks moves it to the outside line as they go into one and two. Gonna have a good drive off here, but so does Lyons. He's gonna shave off about a 10th. He has four of them to take back. Parks is gonna lead this time by. A good battle back here for the seventh spot. You got five trucks all fighting for it. Kurtz is in there, Page, Cunningham, Hobbs, get a good, uh, Good battle here, all trying to pass Sheets, who's on the bottom. Zane's 80 creeping into the picture as well. Oh, and there's so Hubbard up in the fence. Big wall right for Hubbard, 51. There's a lot of spots. Hard touch there. That actually put him three wide there out of the exit of two. And the five of Kurtz is going to get up into the seventh position because of that. Zane's 80 is going to get into the top 10 now as he works out of turn four. Hubbard in trouble Trucks again. all over the place. Popped the wall a little bit on the exit of four, I think. And Worthington's going to take advantage, try and follow that 11 machine of Ryan Stettel. Oh, the Pops catch the fence a little bit. Somebody touched it there. I... Might have been the 10, yeah. This is, I think, the part of the run 25 laps in where if you drove it too hard at the start, you're going to feel it. With the exception of the leader who's in clean air, but Lyons has chased him down. Yeah, Lyons has it under two tenths of a second as they go into turn one up on the outside. Now, this goes back to what you talked about earlier and what I would probably venture to say you're in dirty air right now. If you're the 48 truck, you have to be extra careful with how you approach these corners and these entries. You have to back it up a little bit more than the guy that has the air directly on the nose. Yeah, you gotta find Down a course. lane he's not in. And that's what that 40 is trying to do, trying to offset half a truck here, half a truck there, run the top or on the bottom, do something the 73 isn't. Yeah, that downforce is so important as they go into the entries of these corners. With the 73 electing to drive the bottom in three and four, you're going to see a big run here by the 48 as they come out of four. Does he have anything for it, though? Can he go anywhere with it? Not to the outside in one because Parks has been driving it. He's going to take it to the bottom. Don't know if it's going to be enough. You're probably going to see a slide job here by the 48. Not enough. Doesn't get clear. Had to try it, needed another 100 feet or so to be closer to that 73. That might have worked, but not quite. So that uses up the tires driving that bottom, trying to complete that 73 of parks. And this goes back to the racing we saw 
few Tuesdays ago. Once you're up here this late in a run, nobody can do anything with you. We're catching lap traffic now too, so that's gonna make it even more difficult. See the 07 on the bottom, a little bit damage to that machine. And in front of these guys, the 94 is gonna test the top side. Uh, the leader running up there. It's going to make it very difficult to get around him. The dirty air has been a factor pretty much since we hit this lap traffic. Right now, if you're Lucas Lyons, you got to be frustrated because you can get these gaps back. You just can't complete a pass. And he caught a, a lap truck in the worst possible place right on the exit. Had to pinch the exit down. It's going to cost him another tenth or so as he drives in really deep to try and catch the 73. Healy going to work for the third position. He goes down to the very bottom of the racetrack, going to come out a little bit faster last time by than Lucas Lyons, 32 flat for Alex Healy, 97. Really good run there off of two. He worked through this field. 23 positions gained for the 55 of Mace. And looks like the 04 drops down to the apron to get out of the way. This top five has, I mean, potentially any one of these trucks can win this race right now. I would agree with you there. These guys are, I think they're all playoff drivers too, if I'm not mistaken. They've all yeah. shown that they deserve to be up here. They're fast. I'm seeing a lot of red spoilers here in the top five. Daniel Cunningham in the 08, your pole sitter. Back in fifth position, he has the five of Kurtz. I see these guys, oh, 73 Parks is coming down pit road. It's pit stop time. 56 follows down, 77 as well, Zane's 80. So the three trucks peel off the racing surface. This gives the lead over to the, the 48 of Lucas Lyons, but how long do you stay out here, Morgan? Uh, zero laps, you come in right now. You're a second and a half slower. You do not want that 73 to leapfrog you by a second and a half per lap. Here he comes. And they all come. Oh, he missed, he missed the entry. 48. And, and so did the five. Kurtz is around, 48 in reverse. 55 of Mace got a little tag there, but he's able to keep it straight. 08 is down pit road now. And yeah, not too bad for the 55. Looks like he'll he may he may have lost half a second or so, but big issue for Lucas Lyons. He's now in his stall, but he's gonna lose a ton of time. He's already a lap down. Bad news for the 48 machine. and winning this battle off of pit road. It looks like the 08's gonna get it. So your pole sitter probably gonna resume the lead here after all these green flag pit stops. Andy Kurtz, one of those trucks that got turned or slid into the entry. But there's 48. Parks and Reinstedel. Yes, and they are a solid second and a half here, but how much time do we have? 25 laps? Hubbard and, well, Reinstedt, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm gonna venture to say that Reinstedt has a potential to win this race as well. I think that if uh, if these top two, well, Parks does have about three lap pressure tires. I don't know how big of a difference that will be, but I think if these top two can save the battling for the last eight laps or so, and they just work on checking out from this field, I think they have a good chance at it. But if they start battling each other, which, I mean, Parks is just driving away right now. He's driving it for all it's got. Then uh, I would imagine the rest of the field will catch up pretty quickly. Steven Page back here in third position under fire from the pole center. Zero to Daniel Cunningham is going to go by on the inside. Now moves back to the high line. I think this stint is short enough that you can run the outside and probably gain all that time, 1.8, that he has to get back. And here goes the 10 of Hobbs to fourth position. What they can't afford to do is run side by side. You have to be aggressive, but you have to be smart and know what you're racing for. 
running, trying to pass somebody for fourth, not going to help right now. Trying to catch the leader, that's the most important thing. And they're working the draft as they get back into it here with the 11 of Reinstedtel. Bear in mind, the 11 has about four lap order tires, so third place very much capable of getting it by the 11. However, not much of a difference between the lead and the 08, your Bolson. And that was three tenths that lap. Half a second, sorry, that the 08 was faster than the 74, so they're, they're getting there. And you can see that gap is closing quickly. Half a second here as they go into three. Zero 08 has the 93 as a lap down here in front of him. He's gonna have to meet up with that truck perfectly. Try and go to the top. Oh, 93 is going to block for some reason. That was one of the maneuvers, I suppose. Trying to no. move to the outside just a little bit late there, and the 11 falls back to fifth. Not going to hurt Fourth. these second and third place trucks too much as they are hooked up and ready to go get that lead. Well, the confidence level here for the 08 right now, if you had the pole, you know you belong up there in the front. 73, not gonna run across the tri-oval. Now to the outside for Cunningham on Parks. Dive to the bottom there by Hobbs. Three-way battle for the lead. Little block there. Now washes up another block down the back stretch. Truck into the wall back there. That's Zane Zadie. Battle on for second now. Hobbs to the bottom as they come out of four. Zero eight to the outside across the line. That time by even lap times within a tenth. Hobbs down to the bottom. Three way battle now. Down the back stretch, three wide into three. Zero eight pinched down by Hobbs. 73 lets him by. Hobbs is going to lead his first lap of the race. Washes out a little bit wide there on the tri-oval. Almost opens up the door for the 73 as they go into one. What happened to Parks? He's losing ground. I guess the byproduct of running hard at the beginning of the run and then losing that clean air. That truck is not going to drive very well. Also under attack from the 55 of Mace. And the 08 of Cunningham is just on the verge of clearing the 10 of Hobbs. He doesn't quite do it. He does lead that time by. But Kyle Mace is now back into the picture. Even after that contact on pit road, he still has a truck that could possibly take over this lead. He's going to try to run down Hobbs and Cunningham. Healy back oh, he the turned turn, and the 73 is around. And Healy's involved into the three. Well, that changes everything. Well, if you have an extra set of tires, now's the time to take them. I tell you, it looked like on this replay that the 73 just cut down early. I would agree with that. I think Mace wanted to run the middle, and Parks wanted to go to the bottom, maybe also the middle, but obviously two trucks met up, and only one came out the other side. Tough break for the 73, though. He had a phenomenal drive. Led 29 right. laps. That contact, though, sets him back to ninth position. Eric Parks has a lot of work cut out for him here. But he's set up for pit stops. It looks like everybody behind the leader is going to come down. Ooh, I, 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 Hobbs is trying to fake him, and he uh, he may have faked himself out here. I don't, I don't know if he can stay out on 10-lap older tires in the rest of the field, but I guess we're going to find out. But if you're cutting him, you've got to take tires because everybody behind you is going to do the same thing. Hobbs is going to stay out. We have 15 to go. This is the time to take them.
down and away for the 77 truck. It's like Zadie's going to win the race off pit road here. Two tire stop for him. This may be the right call. We'll find out. But you got the leader on no tires. Second place is going to be on two tires. Fourth place is going to be on two tires. And Cunningham, first truck out on brand new four Goodyears. I like where the 08 is sitting right now. I would have to call, barring that we don't have anything dramatic happen to him. He has the speed here. And with the two trucks in front of him, Zane's 80 on two tires probably could put up a better fight. But Jeremiah Hobbs is a sitting duck here on this restart. And the truck beside the 08 will also be on two tires. Yeah. So he's kind of boxed in around those machines that aren't quite on the same equipment. So we'll see what happens here. Back down pit road for some of these guys. Eric Parks, who had damage. Uh, Sean Kaser. Kenneth McCullough Jr., Alex Healy back down. You saw him get a piece of that as well. Quite a few trucks that just trying to get some of that damage repaired. Situation here right now, Morgan, if I'm picking a driver, I'm going with the 08. There he is right there. Ghost machine trying to change the luck around. Morgan Duck's not doing it for him. We'll see if that was the right move. <laughs> he's, uh, he's looked oh, pretty good. Oh, it's the right move. Yeah, he's, he's looked pretty I'll good here. I'll tell you here. right now. But. As soon as that paint scheme changed, started getting podiums. That's the wrong go. You need a high state if you're going to get some championships. I'm just saying. All right, let's, uh, let's keep it together. Let's I, keep it civil. I, ho I hope he goes back and watches that. Let's keep it civil here on comment. B Speed. <laughs> Oh, man. Don't know much about college football. Can't speak one way or the other up here in Canada. We don't have a ton of that. But uh, <laughs> got to love a good sports rivalry. But there's one brewing here. What do you think? You ready to see some fireworks? Oh, we're going to see it. I think Jeremiah Hobbs right now with the no tires and, you know, staying out. He faked himself out of pit road. He has his work cut out for him. He's going to elect to start on the outside. That's probably the wisest decision he can come up with right now. However, you have two tires to the inside. I hope it doesn't get loose for Zane Zadie. I know how two tires can upset this truck. It could be the, the secret recipe here. I don't know. Yeah, you I say mean, that. We've seen the, the overhaul. I would want it to be loose, personally. If I was Zane Zadie, I would be quite happy. This thing is going to be super free. We say it off in turn one, especially into turn three, when you come around to complete that first lap. And I would just drive the wheels off of it for 15 more laps, 12, whatever we're going to have left. And don't even think about saving tires. Just go. Drive 12 qualifying laps and go out there and win this thing. Yeah, definitely the potential there if this thing holds up. I'm just curious as to whether it can pass on the bottom with those two tires could definitely be a situation that changes the outcome of this race. We've seen it a lot in the trucks, especially. But here we go with Hobbs on the outside, Zadie, Cunningham, and Sheets in the one. Three different tires. Green flag is out. The 10 of Hobbs gets a good restart. How long will it last? 13 to go. No H trying real hard to get around that 77. So he can dispatch him. He can really get by the 10 quickly. They're all running right against that white line. Oh my goodness, a block down the back stretch, but they're going to carry the momentum into one or into three. And the 08 just about clear. Hobbs, not quite. Now they come off the corner. He is clear. He's going to dive it to the bottom. And there's Mace on four fresh tires. He's going to get up on the bumper. Mace and Cunningham, both on the same page when it comes to tires, but Cunningham has the clean air as they come out of two. Three wide back there, deep in the field. How about this? Kyle Mace, who's been up in the front, back to the back, and then back to the front in second position. 24 positions gained as they come across the line. The pole sitter is going to lead this time by... 11 laps to go. Can he hold him off? 
Where'd Ryan Settle come from? Up 21 hey, spots. Ryan He's Settle's been up here. He's been up here a couple times today, and I tell you what, the speed here on the outside is starting to become prevalent all over the back bumper of the 08. Is Kyle Mace. They're pulling away from Ryan Settle. 10 laps to go. They're checking out from this top three. Ryan Steadle holding down those positions just behind him. Zane Zaney on two tires, the 11 on four fresh ones. The top three all on the same tires to the outside for Mace. He might carry the speed here. Really surprised nobody's using that outside. 08 is going to run the bottom all the way through, hold the momentum. Mace has a big run out of four. He's going to take it to the outside. 08 not going to let him have the bottom. Late apex here for the 55 and a block down the back stretch. The 11 Ryan said will have a run out of two. He's going to take it to the outside. 55 of Mace is going to play devil's advocate and let him survive one more lap. How long do you wait, Morgan? I think you got to go now. Uh, a caution could come out. Oh, they're just about wrecking Page off the nose of somebody. They saved it. I think that was Hubbard. Something like that could happen. Snap of a fingers, and all of a sudden, you're pacing for five more laps, and it's a shootout. I would go get them right now. This is the opportunity. Mace has the run. Little push here from Ryan Settle down the back stretch into three, side by side into the corner. Zero eight, probably not going to be able to carry this. He's just barely clear. 55 of Mace going to take over the point right at the line. Man, I tell you what, Mace is just about cleared for the lead three times in a row, but he can't get around Cunningham. I think if he gets it one more time, gets that position, he's got to force the issue. He's got to start. Oh, oh crossover. Wow. Nothing what? there, and he tags the bumper in the entrance of three. Now Ryan Settle has to check up in the 08 with the block down the back stretch, gets the groove. He's going to pull away half a 10. And Mace blocked all the way up the racetrack on Page, and now it's three wide for second. They're oh, contact each with the other. 11. Three wide in the one. The racing here with five to go when they cross the line. Ryan Settle now into second position. May still trying to block the 56 of Page. The high line starting to come into account. Two tires back up on the four tires. Hubbard and Zane Zadie still holding it down in fifth oh, position. Oh, there goes Zadie the, the 56. Oh, good save for Zadie. That could have been a disaster. Page just got loose how off the they, corner. How are they holding it together, Morgan? Grip. Cold track, fresh tires, and they are driving the wheels off it. Oh, man, if I right now, I'm seeing the contact all over this racetrack. Second position up for grabs. The uh, 55 back to the outside. He's trying to take it away from Ryan Steddle. Kyle Mace is just all over the racetrack, trying to find that spot where he can complete a pass. More contact as they come across the trioval. Everyone is driving to their absolute limit right now with four laps to go, just trying to get everything they can get to chase down that leader. If I'm the 0-8, I'm going to move it up a lane here. He is not getting a good run out of the exits of these corners. He needs to move it up. The only thing I think right now for Cunningham is that they're racing side by side behind him, but he needs to move it up a lane. Peyton Hubbard is on the prowl. Here he comes for the third position to the inside of the 55 of Mace. The 11 of Ryan Steddle playing defense on both lines as they go into one. He's going to move up to the outside. 08 did not get a good run out of that exit. Here comes the 11 of Ryan Steddle. They are sizing him up right now, Morgan. He needs to move it up a lane. I do not like the exit speed that the 08 has had. Here comes the 11 again. He cuts the trioval. That bails him out a little bit, but going into one, you can see that deficit dwindling down with two to go. And here off the corner, you can just see looking off the rear bumper. It's get, That truck's getting bigger. It's under a tenth now. If I run the outside right now, I really feel like I'm Superman. One-tenth of a second as they come for the white flag. 
One lap to go here at Kansas. Ryan Stenner to the outside, him. and there's a yellow. Zane Zadie into the grass. And that they did not take the white flag. This is a overtime that is finish. 100 foot short. That is 100 feet short of the line. Oh, if you're cutting him, man. This could have been a shootout to turn three. You could have locked it up, and now we have a restart. This changes everything. Into overtime. Zadie off the racetrack. I don't know if that's what brought out the caution or not. This is off of two. Zadie, remember, was on two, two tires on that last one. He's going to come back down and get four or get the other side at least. Kaufman, yeah, that probably did bring it out. It was on the surface enough when he was 90 degrees, but nobody else seemed to have any problems after that. That's just enough to bring out the yellow Morgan 100 feet short of the line. We had the white flag in the air. They did everything but, waving it. everything but push the button, right? <laughs> they got so close. Uh, I think we bring up the zero eight. I can't think of a better one. Daniel Cunningham, it's Bradley Cooper, Morgan Cook in the B Speed booth. Do you got a copy? Yeah, I got you, brother. Buddy, this is probably the restart of your life right now. Chase race number two. You're sitting on point. You started on point. It's been a battle to get back to it. Oh, man, the 11, the 55, everybody putting you under fire. But you have three more laps, about two and a half here when we go into green. Yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be interesting. I did not want to see that caution come out. So, uh, yeah, just going to have to do what I can on this restart here and try to keep everybody behind me, hopefully. Well, the Ghost Energy paint scheme seems to be working for you as of late. You've kept it up front for a lot of this race. The restart, so important, but let's take it back. This line right now, the bottom, the exit speed, you see them in your mirror right now. What does it take to finish this thing out? And get uh, looking in my mirror more than I'm looking out front, to be honest, just trying to see where the runs are coming from, see who's side by side, try to manipulate the draft if I can. So uh, I'll be honest, the last this last run since I got back to the lead, I've been looking in the mirror a little more than I'm looking out the windshield. It's almost like a daytona or talladega type of thing is it loose on the high side that's one more question i have for you because we've seen a lot of people coming off the exits running that middle to high line getting a good run no it honestly feels about the same between the two maybe a little tighter on the bottom but nothing terrible well i trust that you know what you're doing here on this restart good luck out there man and we'll probably get to talk to you post race hold it together buddy thanks brad 08 Daniel Cunningham, C2 Motorsports, going to restart on the point here for these last two and a half, well, I say th three laps technically. We go back green. Probably one to go this time. Let's see when we cross the line, if those lights go out on the top of the pace truck. Everyone's getting a little antsy behind them, it looks like. Mark Cofield in the chat said, no. <laughs> They brought out a yellow just before the line. I thought we were going to see a shootout here with Ryan Steddle and Cunningham. Well, we have another chance at it here on the well, restart. We'll have to settle for a bit of an uh, an inorganic version. Uh, that was a shaping up to be a great finish, but I have no doubt we're going to see something equally as wild here. When you heard me ask and you heard me say it several times, it seems like the outside is getting a good run, and I hope I didn't give away anything here. But Ryan Settle, if he runs the way he did here on these last couple laps, he's going to be right at the bumper of the 08 as they go into turn three. But the cream's rising to the top in this race. Peyton Hubbard moved up to third beside Kyle Mays. How about Andy Kurtz after that lap seven spin up to fifth? We have quite... The race finish playing out in front of our eyes, and I, for one, am uh, edge of my seat. 
I am pumped. Let's get the Silverado pace truck out of the way and find how this thing ends. I want to see Cunningham. I want to see Ryan settle. I want to see Hubbard three wide across the line. Here we go for what could be the last restart into overtime. Chase race number two, zero eight on the loud pedal into turn one. Not a good restart there for Ryan settle. Spins the tires base to the inside into one. This is exactly what the 08 of Cunningham wants, but Mace is able to clear the 11. Now down the back stretch. Big run here for three or four different trucks. A block to the bottom. Cars all the oh, way caution down. Caution is out. And we have a yellow. Caution is out. Not sure what for. I don't see any slow trucks on the racetrack here. This could be something to do with the restart. But I'm not sure. Zero seven, maybe? Zero seven. Yep, going into one. Back it up into the entry right on the restart gets turned. Got into the back, a little check up there by Bobby Hall and as they go into turn one, Move to the outside back there. They are four wide going into turn one. And just right across the nose. Yeah. Some help from Bieber and around goes the 07. And that is a caution. Overtime number two now. Ah, man, I tell you what. I am so surprised, Morgan, that nobody is trying to work that outside line. It is driving me insane. Well, it might be because it's only 70 degree track temp. That could have something to do with it. A lot of grip on the bottom of this racetrack. And these trucks don't, don't have as much power as the Xfinity cars you're used to running. So a lot easier to run I, the bottom. I just, I just, I feel like the high line would be better. I just feel like I see the run that they're getting on the exits of these corners if they wash it out wide. I feel like if you if you came into these entries middle and went up to the high line on the exit, you probably would gain two or three tenths down the straightaway. I maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about. But Kansas is just one of those tracks where the high line has been dominant for a long time, and to see these trucks all on the bottom here on these restarts all the way around this racetrack for the outlap. The hard part about the I top could be, side I could be wrong. is that it takes two or three laps to get it wound up to get up there, right? So yeah, if you only yeah. got two to go, you don't really have time to get it wound up. you got to run the bottom shortest way around because by the time you come to get the checker, that's just that just then getting to top speed. Uh, I don't know. I, I want to see find somebody out. try it. <laughs> I want to see somebody try it. I mean that's going to be the hail mary move, right? If you're uh, if you're Page, if you're Hubbard, if you're Worthington, you're going to got to do something different. You might as well go all the way to the top side, lap one, turn one, and just of this restart. I mean, and just try something different. Yeah, and I mean on on turn one, right as soon as you hit the pedal, probably bottom is the way to be. When you go into three, though. I would choose I would choose that middle or high because of the clean air, because of the fact that you get a run off the corner. I'd say by lap two, when you're taking the white flag, this thing's probably up close to full song. I would stick to the outside from there on out. You probably could stand to gain if you're Page or if you're Hubbard, you, you could stand to gain a, a spot or two. However, you know, if you're Cunningham right now, the clean air bottom to top is all the same whatever you're comfortable with running just hope that the guy on lap two of this restart doesn't get a good enough run wherever he goes in the draft or whatever the case may be that he gets a run on you you might have to change your line and play defense how many uh how many, how many more restarts could we have is it two green white checkers in this series three green white checkers i believe and I guess the first one would be a natural, right? Because we, we, uh, or would it, would that count as green white checker number one? Well, that would be number one. And then now we have, this is the second one. We have one more after this. Uh, 
unless I'm losing my mind. Oh, that sounds Which about is right. Highly possible. Needed someone to confirm it for me. Of course, stage lap on lap 30. Kyle Mace got the stage. He's going to be up here in second position. Oh, man, the anxiety that I get here on these restarts because we've we've talked about it all race long. What lines to run. We thought the outside was going to be more dominant. It hasn't really gotten to that point. I mean, it, we had a little stint there where it got good, but it wasn't what it is normally. And my frustration lies with the fact that I see I can see it brewing. What what is the 55 going to do? He's got to do something different. Here we go. Three laps to go. We're going to take two to go. Green, white, checkered attempt number two into the restart zone. Zero eight, your pole sitter taking the green flag back underway. And slide hobs around. We're not going to go. We're going to go one more time. The final green, white, checkered attempt. Miss shift here for the 10. I think that's less mischief and more games on the front row of the restart that cause a huge checkup. Somebody check missed something. Yeah, Kaufman's around as well, the 25. There he is. Well, let's go back. Let's look at the front row. Let's look at Cunningham. Because Kyle Mays tried something sneaky here on this restart. So you can see it better from the blimp cam. But you see the 55's rolling, and Cunningham's like, I got to wait? And now go. And everyone else behind him is already accelerating. You can see it in the back. The five, the one, have to check up hard. And all of a sudden, around goes a few other trucks. However, the 08 did have a legal start. It was completely within the, the start box when he went. If you're the 55, you can't pass the leader before he gets to the line. So... You have to be careful there with that that move. How, however, on top of that, Mace has to try something to match the pace into one. So much going on there on this restart. Another riding on board with Hobbs. Look at it as we go into the restart. You can kind of see everything check up in front of these two red trucks in front of the tent. That's Kenneth McCullough in the front. Yeah, hard check there. Ah, oh, man. I, Hobbs, one of those trucks that was up here in the top five when this all began. And we extend this race again for the final green-white checker. This could be locked up here. If we have another restart like that, it's over. Yeah, everyone, well, everyone except for Cunningham is hoping that they keep it together at least until turn one. Cunningham's hoping for a quick caution and call it because he obviously wants to win this race right off into the sunset. Big movers throughout this race. Mace, Reinstedel, Hubbard, Worthington up 24, 21, 14, and 17 positions <laughs> respectively. <laughs> like, that's the unreal. The entire top five started outside the top ten. Save for your pole sitter who yeah. started on the pole and is currently leading. Yeah, yeah. A lot of potential here. What happened during qualifying? Did this track state just now come into, you know, what they had in practice and, and what they were used to running? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I would have to say that as far as qualifying goes, everybody that's up here in this top five is usually pretty fast. Something dramatic happened here in qualifying that put these guys outside the top 10. And then with the exception of Cunningham, who's been kind of naturally fast all day, he's in, he's in adaptation mode right now because he has a lot of guys that he hasn't been familiar with racing for most of this. Ryan Settle. And, and Mace, you know, 20 positions plus, 
Then you have 19 gain back here. Michael Cole in the top 10. Yeah, that's a truck we haven't mentioned all night. Dakota Shepard as well in that 101. Guys moving forward 12 and 19 spots respectively. Congratulations to those two. Just having a great run here tonight. We'll see if they can close it out with a good top 10 finish. Right in front of them, Ron Morris Jr. Talked about him early. He was up in the top three earlier in the race. He's hung around the top 10 all night. Really impressive drive by some drivers who we just don't typically see up here. Candace will do that. Well, here we go, Morgan. We've got one more attempt at a green white checker and chase race number two for the Chuck series. The fireworks have not been lit yet, but I can guarantee you somebody's on standby to put this fire out. Down the back straight away, the favorite, Daniel Cunningham, who started on the pole. A great start to the season for Kyle Mace. Dustin Reinstedel, who's kind of been an underdog all season long. Peyton Hubbard, who was fast last time we talked about him on V-Speed during a season. And Daniel Worthington, the 113. Could be a top five day. Andy Kurtz, Ron Morris Jr., Dakota Shepard, Kenneth McAuliffe Jr., Michael Cole in the top 10. Final restart of the night, guaranteed. Green flag is out. We're back underway at Kansas. Overtake iRacing League Truck Series action for the chase. Great restart for the 08 of Cunningham. Hubbard to the outside for third. Mace loses a little bit of ground. Can he build the momentum up for the second lap? White flag about to come out here, Morgan. I tell you what, off the turn four, if you're the 08, you gotta play defense. And the 55 is, is moving right now. He's rolling and he is there. All over the back bumper into turn one, blocked to the bottom of the racetrack. Almost three wide as they went into one. Mace is gonna be on the outside as they come down the back stretch. He's gonna dive it deep to the bottom, blocked by the 08. They're gonna be side by side as they go into three. Can the 08 of Cunningham hold on to the pole and take it all the way through three and four? 11 to Ryan settle to the bottom, all the way down the racetrack. 08 of Cunningham, door contact with the 55, but it is Cunningham who's gonna get the win at Kansas. What a finish there. The 08 had a good enough restart, and Dustin Ryan settled with the door contact on the 51, the 55. Couldn't quite edge it out there for the top two positions. The 08 holds on. What a finish there, Morgan. Yeah, I did not have that on my bingo card tonight. <laughs> All the green-white checkers used. Have a great run to the finish and just a just a terrific race all the way through. See, I saw it all. Saw some crazy incidents, saw some good green flag racing, a really good battle to the finish, controversy, all sorts of stuff here tonight, and just an impressive run for this 08 machine. Burning it down on the front stretch. Danford, I see you in the chat. Hope your hand is okay. How about that finish? 8-11-51. Nope, we had 8.55.11. Cofield just about got it. But the finish here for the 08, a win under the belt in the playoffs for Daniel Cunningham. Post race interviews with your top three. The finish here tonight for all three green white checkers was amazing. Hope you guys stick around. You're watching the Overtake iRacing League Truck Series live on V-Speed. More coverage continues right after this.
And here comes Milo. Big run out of four. He's going to be there. Oh, Tristan Marty there. Cannot count out to 37. Oh! oh no. Cabot, where did he come Cabot from? Here, here comes Zwack. A punt from the 33. Two it's a drag row. race. Back live from Kansas Speedway, the Overtake iRacing League Truck Series has concluded its 105 laps. We had three overtimes here today. 90 laps was the original scheduled distance, but it wasn't enough. Daniel Cunningham started on the pole. He's going to come out on top. How about the big gainers behind him, though? Kyle Mace. He gained 24 positions to come home in second. Dustin Reinstedel in third, 21 spots up. 14 gain for the 51 of Peyton Hubbard. 17 gain for the 51, or the, I apologize, the 113 of Daniel Worthington. So the entire top five minus your pole sitter have gained over 10 spots. What a finish there. Kenneth McCullough Jr. in the 0-3 gains four to finish six. Andy Kurtz gains six to finish seventh. Lucas Lyons, the first lost position in this top 10. He lost one spot to finish eighth. Dakota Shepard up 11 to finish ninth. And Sean Kaser, he started up in the sixth spot, but he'll round out the top 10 here today. Finishing 11th. Hall in the 93. Fitch started 23rd today. Zadie's down 1 to 12th. Page up 6 in the 56. Finished 13th. Parks up a whole bunch. 13 of them to finish 14th. Even though we led a lot of this race, I'm probably disappointed in the 14th place finish. Hobbs gained 2, finished 15th. Sheets down 7 in the 16th position. Healy up 4 to 17th in the 97th machine. He started 21st. And Cole gains 10. He finished 18th. Morris Jr. finished 19th. And Kaiser from the front row to 20th, one lap down. I know if I'm Alex Healy right now, this is this is playoff time. I kind of feel bad for the 97. He was up in the top five for a lot of this race. However, we go back to 21st position. That's going to belong to James Kaufman. He started in fourth here today. Probably, I mean, you, you take a lot away from these races, but that, that one's going to sting a little bit down 17. You have Chad Ross in the 22nd position. Travis Bieber in the 114 is going to finish 23rd. 24th, Christopher McCullough. He lost a lot of positions because, because of damage. Another truck that lost a lot of dam or lost a lot because of damage as well as the 94 of Bobby Hall Jr. Barrett Morton out of this race. That is the leader coming into tonight. Tough break for him. 26th position, 88 of West Wigan. A lot of these guys back here are playoff, you know, red spoilers in this in this race. West Wigan, John Mullahan round out the field here tonight. Oh, Morgan, I tell you what, the shakeup in the points, it's been huh. It's been eventful here in the truck series, but the guy that just just had an outstanding regular season finishing outside the top 25. He's going to have to have a complete turnaround next week. All right, let's move on down to pit road. We have Dustin Reinstedel in the third position, the number 11 truck. He gets a top three here today. Dustin, I, I tell you what, Dustin, you were door to door several times. All those opportunities on these restarts, the final opportunity off a of turn four, you, you just touched him enough, but it 
it didn't work and you get third here tonight. Yeah, it was pretty fun. We were actually just talking about it. Uh, that's one thing I like about this league is that, you know, there's a lot of zero X contact. I mean, hell, I probably, me and him probably sideswiped each other and, and rubbed quarter panels probably seven or eight times a night and never had a, an incident out of it. Um, uh, until after the line. <laughs> uh, but that was pretty fun. I'm not going to lie. We were just talking about it. Uh, I, I should have just went down. I actually probably would have got second if I would have went down. But I tried to hold the white line because I thought I had good enough of a run. And uh, he doored me, and I went down, and I come back up and doored him. So it, it's all in all in good fun. It was pretty pretty cool finish. Oh, I agree 100%. The whole thing from green, white checker, number one, we saw the zero eight up on the top. And uh, we asked during that uh, first caution, if the outside maybe was possible with the clean air, did you feel like at any point you could change your line up and, and maybe get around you know, organically? Or was it just all about who had the draft? Uh, before that last caution, I actually thought I had something for Dan. Uh, not being a playoff driver, you don't really want to do too much, I guess, to affect anybody's race negatively. So if I was going to get past Dan, I would have had to have been been on the top because he was still running the bottom. But I, I was right there before the first caution, and then after that, it was kind of just you know trying not to wreck was really my goal. Uh, so once we came out of four, and I knew that even if I got, I spun or or we wrecked each other, that's we got pretty aggressive there coming to the line. So. Uh, but no, I, after the green white checkers, I didn't have anything for him. It was all about controlling the the uh, run behind you, really. Well, eight cautions, twenty one lead changes. You were able to lead a little bit here today in the eleven truck. Well, you actually just shy of leading. You you got close to it. But, <laughs> I was gonna uh, say sorry. that's news to me. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got close. You got very close. But the 11 here today started in 24th. I mean, that feels like uh, you led some laps. You passed a million trucks to be here. Do you have anybody you'd like to to thank for tonight's performance? Oh, yeah, I got to shout out my uh, student employees here at the college because we got done. We had a cookout tonight for our uh, our residence hall locations and uh, got done cleaning up at like 850 or something like that and uh ran in here and jumped on and and was able to to make the race so wouldn't have been possible without their hard work at the end of the night well there you go third place finisher here tonight dustin ryan Stettle in the number 11 we thank you for your time buddy and good luck next week man. i do have uh one more thing i actually always keep forgetting this uh, so i got the cancer sucks on the car uh lost my mom back in the uh end of january so don't get to be on much much interviews so for some reason with this paint job. Seems like whenever I have it on, something crazy always happens and, and end up either finishing just outside of an interview or, or something. So give it a shout out. Got her on the truck with me, so it always makes it special whenever we can have a good run on, on a broadcast. Well, shout out there to Mom and Ryan Stettle, and I appreciate that, man. It's, uh, cancer does suck. I agree. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. And um we'll uh we'll keep that in mind next uh next week when we go to coda buddy yes sir thank you thank you guys for all you do dustin ryan settled third place finisher here tonight in the overtake i racing league truck series moving down pit road a little bit more we have our second place finisher of the night that'll be kyle mace in the number 55 kyle i tell you what man had that caution not come out there just at the end of this thing, you were 100 feet short. I think you might have had it in turn one. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, uh, I, I run that high line there before that first caution come out, and I just never could get no help up there. They were all staying in the bottom. I couldn't get around him on top. And I, I don't know. It's just really tough. I didn't. I needed. I needed help. <laughs> well, and. You look at the the line, what we're used to running at Kansas, had this race gone green all the way through, I, I think the high line probably would have came in because we saw a lot of people on the exits of the corners working the high side, and it seemed to get a good one down the straightaway. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I was. It's real fast in the bottom to start with, and then the bottom, and then as you went, it would go to the top. But I think we were just short of where it was better on top. I mean, I think we had like a, what, a 14 or 15 lap run, maybe. So, and then we had so many cautions, and you cool your tires off. So, I just never could get it to work. I tried. Well, we talked about the contact there. You and the 11, uh, we actually watched a, a couple of different trucks there have some contact. How, how fun was that there on that last shootout? Uh, everybody's just going for it. I mean, everybody's getting all they can get. It's get all the points you can because it could be tight. I know there was a lot of people that ran good last week that are out this week and vice versa. So everybody just trying hard to make it to the next round. But, I mean, it was all good. I me and Dustin got together there after, but I talked to him. It was just good hard racing. There wasn't. We're good. Well, setting up here for the points. I know you were favored here to start this thing. You, you lost some positions there last week, but this one probably makes up for it. Kyle, is there anybody you could think that comes to mind that you could shout out here for tonight in Kansas? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'd like to shout out Mr. Healy. I mean, he does a good job with this and keeping everybody in line and making it all work, paying attention to to every little thing. He does a really good job, and he's got people that helps him. I just shout out to those. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Mr. Parks. Early on, like lap 73, I couldn't tell that if he come down or I come up or we just barely touch or it was net code. I don't know. I looked at it. I had uh Daniel looking at it and it looked like it was just racing, but I hate he had a good run. I think we run side by side for twenty laps on one of those sessions. So I'd like to apologize to him. Well Kyle, we thank you for your time. We're going to Coda next week. Uh I'm not sure what you have in store for us there, but hopefully you can capitalize on the fact that we're going road racing here in the Overtake I Racing League Truck Series, and we thank you for your time, buddy. Thank you. Have a good night. At second place finisher of the night, Kyle Mace in the number 55. Finally, we have our winner. We're going to pull Daniel Cunningham up here, and we have Morgan Cook down in Victory Lane with a 08. Hey, Daniel, it's Morgan and Bradley up in V-Speed Victory Lane. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you guys. All right. Well, first off, congratulations. You won the pole, led 39 laps, and then you won the race. Although you had to work for it. Uh, what's going through your mind those last three uh, those last three laps? Actually, let's go back even. Coming to the white flag before it was actually the white flag, what are you thinking? Uh, well, this is a family show, so I can't really say what I was thinking when that uh, <laughs> first caution came out. I was like maybe 100 feet from the start-finish line and the, and the yellow came out. So... Uh, yeah, we'll let your imagination fill in the blanks on that one. Um, and then a after I got over the initial, like, come on, really, let's let's just get this thing done. Then it was just, you know, what do I need to do on the restarts? Who do I have around me? You know, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those. The, the box score says start on pole, let a bunch of laps and win the race. But, uh, man, I don't I, I don't win often, really, but I don't think I've had to work that hard for one <laughs> for a while. Um, you know, Kyle was really fast all night. He, uh, he was definitely, I mean, I would say he was faster than me on short runs. It was everything I had those last couple of restarts. And, uh, you know, right after we would take tires and stuff to keep him behind me. Cause he was just really, really fast on those short runs. So I knew it was going to be tough for sure. Let's talk about those restarts for a minute. There was three of them back to back to back, obviously all the green, white checkers. So on the first one, Mace lined up behind you. And he was able to get almost to your door off of turn two. The second one, he lined up beside you and you guys were playing games in the restart zone. What did you do differently on the third one to be able to get away from the 55? Um, Really on restarts, I watch my mirrors and I watch what's going on around me more than anything. Like I never, I never really predetermine where I'm going to go in the restart zone. I never really have any preconceived notions or anything. I just try to, I try to base it off of what people around me are doing because you get to that point of the race, everybody's trying to anticipate when the restart is going to come. So, you know, like you said, there's restart games being played. It's just kind of nature of the beast at that point. Um, so, you know, you kind of see somebody try to anticipate when's the start going to come, where's he going to launch at. And then when you see that and they have to roll out of it, it's like, okay, now perfect time to, 
mat the gas and get after it. So, uh, yeah, just really trying to be cognizant of what everybody else is doing is, is really just the biggest thing that I, that I had in mind at that point. Well, you played the restart games. Well, obviously got a good launch on the last one and brought it home in victory lane. Who do you want to shout out for this big win dominating win tonight? Yeah, appreciate you guys doing the uh, broadcast as always. All the work that the admins put into the series. I uh, appreciate my teammates over at Bandits and C2 Motorsports, especially with uh, you know Dustin was trying to give me a push there on those restarts. So and you know, trying to work with me so we could try to bring it home one two or at least get a couple of us on the podium. So always nice to have that extra little teamwork going on. And uh, also I, I kind of heard through the grapevine that uh, Bradley may or may not have been giving me a little bit of the business about, you know, I switched from the Oregon truck and or switch from the Oregon schemes in general and my luck starts to turn around. So, uh, you know, may, I was going to say, maybe I need to throw an Oregon logo back on here somewhere for them, you know, for the, for, the be- for the better looking O, but man, they, uh, <laughs> it's that that thing seems to be cursed whenever I run it. So I think I'm going to I think I'm going to hold off on that and see uh see if we can keep the momentum going with the Ghost Energy scheme. I'd say that's probably a wise idea. I know Bradley's got some sort of wise joke all all primed and ready to go, but we're not going to give him the chance here. So how do you feel about Coda next week? I'm glad that I am locked into the next round. <laughs> I uh I'm not very good at Coda. I'm not very good at road courses in general. So uh, not having to worry about points or the cut line or anything like that is nice. I can just kind of go in with the with the expectations off and with the pressure off and, you know, try to maybe get a head start on looking ahead to some of the races in the next round. Right. Well, enjoy Coda, even though you probably won't enjoy Coda. And look ahead to that <laughs> next round. And uh, you earned it. Congratulations on the win, Daniel. Thanks, guys. That is your winner tonight, Daniel Cunningham. Well, Morgan, a lot to unpack. This uh, second race of the playoffs has been good. We had another guy lock himself into it. Barrett Morton has a tough day. He finishes back in 26. The points leader coming into tonight, Kyle Mace, who's starting to rebound after that great start to the season and then going really quiet after race number four. You had a lot of people that have started up towards the front of this race that didn't get the finish that they wanted then you had second through fifth position that gained you know plus 10 positions uh, the entire top five 17 21 24 14 that's just a lot of spots to gain what a thing here tonight i i just i enjoyed every second of it this was a great race from start to finish we had battles all throughout the field The racing up at the front was incredible. You had four or five trucks fighting for the lead. Lead changes up in the in the 20s. Just a a great race, and you know there were some incidents here and there, but just a lot of good hard racing here at Kansas. Well, we hope you enjoyed tonight's action. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please, by all means, hit the buttons at the bottom of your screen. The subscribe button helps us tremendously. Like this broadcast as well. You don't know how it means how much it means to us here at V-Speed to have that happen. But for everybody that made this possible, Adam Baker, who put V-Speed together, does a lot of things in the background. Alex Healy, uh, Cody Anderson, uh, David Farmer, all of the stuff that the league admins do to, to make this show happen. And then my co-commentator and producer of the night, Morgan Cook, our other producers, Eddie Smith and Christian Hill. This is Bradley Cooper telling you to have a great rest of your week. We'll see you tomorrow night for the Xfinity Series, second race of the playoffs in the Overtake iRacing League. We also have QSR and BTDY on the docket here at V-Speed. Until then, everybody, we'll see you next time. Have a good night.